If you want a simple lead generation funnel which can produce free, cost-neutral leads from Facebook ads, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you a simple four-step funnel which is designed to recover the costs of your ad spend through the sale of a mini front-end product or a self-liquidating offer. Now, when you nail this funnel, you can create an unlimited marketing budget for lead generation, which means you can scale your primary offers quicker and easier and more profitably. Now, not alone will you be getting free leads from paid traffic, but if you follow my process in this video, the lead you attract will be pumped, primed, and eagerly waiting for your next offer. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, this funnel doesn't just work with Facebook or Meta. It works with Google, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, and any other form of paid traffic source. Hey, it's Michal here from Lead to Launch, where we help course creators and membership site owners build profitable lead generation processes and create purpose-driven paydays through online launches. Now, if you hang around to the end of this video, I'll share one simple tweak that can turn this funnel from covering the costs of your paid traffic to essentially getting paid to add email subscribers to your list. Okay, let's jump straight in. Now, I wanna start off by giving you an overview of the funnel, and then I'm gonna bring you step-by-step -step through each phase, outlining the keys to success in each. So let's jump on screen. Okay, so here we can see the four phases. Now, phase one is the traffic phase. In this phase, we choose the source of the traffic we wish to drive to our lead magnet. This could be organic or paid, but for today, we're gonna to focus on paid traffic. Phase two is the enroll phase. This is where we capture people's email addresses, but instead of that being the end of the process, we're actually only enrolling them in the concept that a better future is possible for them. Now, phase three is the elevate phase. This is where we make a low dollar offer that has been specifically designed to elevate them from their current level on our value ascension roadmap to the next level. I'll explain this in more detail when we get into phase three. Phase four, which is often ignored by many marketers, is one of the most important phases of the funnel. It is here that we prime people for the next offer that we will make, which will normally be our signature program or our membership. So what's the problem that we're trying to solve with this funnel? Well, the cost of advertising on any platform, especially the ones to get results, will increase over time. Now, we see this with Google, Facebook, and YouTube. In fact, we actually see this within each platform when they launch a new ad type or a channel. Also, like all ad platforms are auction based, which means as more people get results on a platform, more people want to advertise, which increases the bids on available advertising real estate. Now, as knowledge commerce businesses, you know, course creators or membership site owners, if we want to co grow quickly and profitably, eventually we may see our customer acquisition costs catch up with our average order value or our front end revenue, which squeezes our profits and puts massive pressure on our primary promotions and our conversion rates. Now, this is not a nice place to be, especially if we don't have an established dependable back-end funnel, which gives us comfort to go negative on our front end. Now, in the early days of Facebook, because you could acquire leads so cheaply and at such volumes, advertisers could wait months to recover their advertising costs. And if the conversion rates on their offers were low, it didn't really make much difference. Today, it's a very different story, and that's exactly why we need this funnel. The mini front-end funnel enables us to liquidate our profit from a low-dollar offer upfront immediately when somebody opts in for our free lead magnet. Now, getting this funnel up and running can transform your business and give you unparalleled opportunities to scale both your profitability and your impact. Okay, so let's dive into phase one. When it comes to building your funnel, I would focus on one channel first. Which channel you choose will really depend a lot on your target market. In saying that, unless you have specific expertise with Google or YouTube ads, I would start with Facebook. Generally speaking, the cost per lead on you know, Google or YouTube will be higher than Facebook. So when you're setting up and optimizing your funnel, this can be a better option for you as you'll be able to get more data and feedback in a shorter time frame at a lower cost. Now, some of the keys to a successful Facebook ad include one, like before you publish an ad, set up your Facebook business manager and your Facebook ad account. Now you can run ads from your personal profile, but this is a huge mistake and you'll be missing lots of critical functionality in doing so. Audience selection is important. Don't just stick to the obvious audiences that your competitors will go after. Think in terms of parallel and complementary audiences. Keep your audiences large. This time last year, 1.5 million to 2.5 million was the sweet spot for audience size. Now it's more like 10 million to 15 million per audience. 
Make sure you use custom audiences as a foundation for your lookalike audiences. Custom audiences may be previous customers or even an entire email list. Anything that gives Facebook data on who is most likely to be interested in your offer. Once you've uploaded your custom audience, you can then create lookalike audiences based on a percentage population of countries who look most like the people in your custom audience. Now, iOS 14.5 may have had an impact on the effectiveness of retargeting audience, but make sure you have audiences built for people who visit each page of your funnel. Retargeting ads will always be your most profitable ads, and without them, you're leaving money on the table. Make sure you have at least three to seven variations of your ad per ad set. I normally start with three copy variations, a short, a medium, and long form copy, and two creative variations. Now make sure you test video and static images for your ad creative. Video can be tougher to get converting, but often will outperform static images once it's been optimized. Remember that you know, nobody launches an ad, a winning ad straight out of the gate. The real skill with Facebook ads is to know how to test and optimize each element of the campaign. And I would always start out with a lower budget and optimize you know, and increase that budget over time once the ad is optimized. I recently recorded a video series on planning, launching, and optimizing a profitable Facebook ad campaign. So you can check out that series here, and I'll drop a link in the description as well. Phase two is the enroll phase. The success of your funnel will largely be dictated by the conversion rate of your landing page. Now you can also check out a video, a dedicated video I did on landing page optimization here. I'll drop a link to it in the description as well. But when it comes to launching an opt-in landing page for a lead magnet, there's only five elements that should feature on the page and they are headline, subhead, image, body copy, and call to action. Here is the default landing page layout I always start with. The key to success when you're launching a new landing page is keeping it simple. If you're not 100% confident that a word is driving somebody to register for your lead magnet, then it's probably preventing them from doing so. This is why it's better to start with fewer words and once you have uh, you know, optimized the copy to get a baseline conversion rate that you're you know, happy with, then you can start adding in the other elements. Over time, you can look at moving around you know, the on-screen elements, but as a starting point, this is your best bet to get good results early in play. Here are some key takeaways that can help you guarantee landing page success. Number one, make sure your headline has a strong hook to capture your visitor's attention. You know, there's lots of different approaches we can use for this. However, one that I love and regularly use is, you know, especially in the knowledge space, is the desired outcome plus a metric plus a timeline minus the frustration. An example of this approach would be attract your first or next 1,000 email subscribers in just 30 days without a landing page. Use fascination in your copy. Don't tell, but tease the transformation. In other words, how somebody's life will be different once they've implemented your lead magnet. For example, discover the secret to younger looking skin in just 39 hours. Number one mistake that even the most intelligent marketers make and how you can avoid it. Have a strong and a clear call to action which stands out on your page. Your call to action, you know, in my example, is the button that people press to sign up. So make sure you include you know, an element of transformation in the call to action. For example, attract more leads today, reduce your cost per lead, increase your conversion rates today. Make sure that your landing page is highly focused. People should have one option and one option only. They should either subscribe or leave, that's it. Make sure that you don't have any links on the landing page except those that you're legally required to have, like the privacy policy, terms and conditions, and depending on what you're offering, maybe an earnings disclaimer. If you want to discover more about designing landing pages to convert, I have a more detailed video on that, which you can see on screen now, and I'll drop a link in the description. Okay, now for the magic. Phase three, the elevate phase. Okay, we've driven people from paid ads to our lead magnet opt-in page. Now, once somebody opts in, instead of you know, our standard thank you page, we're gonna redirect them to a page that makes an offer for a low dollar amount, normally in the range of 17 to $47. Now, I'm sure this isn't groundbreaking concept for you. However, many people who attempt this approach fail to achieve the results that they want. The key reason for this is that there's misalignment between their lead magnet and their mini front-end product. To explain, I'm gonna bring in my value ascension roadmap on screen. Okay, so for this example, we could ignore level one, the free front-end content. And for this video, I want to jump straight to level two, which are lead magnets. 
Now, if you want a lead magnet to be compelling and attractive, it has to solve one single and highly annoying issue for your target audience. It needs to solve the problem that they feel is holding them back and preventing them from moving forward. It doesn't have to, and it shouldn't solve all of their problems. It should just help them take one step on their journey to the ultimate transformation that you know is possible for them. And your value ascension roadmap is the visual representation of that journey. Now, I have a more detailed video on this, which you can check out on screen now, um, and I'll also drop a link to it in the description. The key to a mini product that sells like crazy is that it solves the very next problem that somebody will face once they've implemented your lead magnet. We have to break it down into small steps and make it feel like their purchasing the, of the mini product is the logical next step for them to take. People will buy convenience and speed. If you can show them that your mini product will either get them the same transformation as the lead magnet, only easier and faster, or that they can get to their ultimate goal quicker and easier, then they're going to purchase. And that's the key to cracking this strategy. You know, your sales process is going to be driven from a psychology perspective based on reciprocity. You know, because you've just given them something for free and they will feel then feel more compelled to take the action that you suggest. You're also invoking the principle of consistency, which is people's need to behave in a manner that matches their past decisions. Having made the decision that opting in for the lead magnet was a good course of action, subconsciously they will feel more compelled to register for your mini product, uh, front end product, in order to justify their initial action. But all the psychology in the world won't help unless purchasing your mini front end product solves a problem for them that feels like it's a logical next step for them to take. So now we're into the final phase, phase four, the prime phase. So most people go to all that effort and energy and expense of generating lead only to completely ignore people after they've opted in. Your actions immediately after somebody has opted in are absolutely essential to developing a long-term repeat and high lifetime value clients. Now, somebody coming through this funnel will either have purchased your mini front end product or will have declined the opportunity. Based on their decisions, they are funneled into one of two email sequences. The purchase sequence congratulates them for taking action and drives them to consume and implement your mini product. This is hugely important because if somebody purchases something from you and doesn't consume or implement what you have sold them, no matter what the reason, they'll be less likely to buy from you again. The key is to help people gain momentum. Do this and you'll have a client for life. Drive them back into your mini product. Outline some of the key content um, you know, where they'll get the majority of the results. Short circuit the process for them. Give them the three to seven steps that they need to take. Oh, and if you really want to create a lifetime relationship, work in a, in a big unexpected gift or surprise. People remember experiences that rise above the ordinary. Give them something on promise that they will remember for a long time. The second is your non-purchase sequence. Now, just because people didn't buy right away doesn't mean that they weren't interested. It could mean that they, you know, you hadn't built the appropriate level of trust with them or they didn't grasp the value of the offer. So begin this process with a nurture sequence of three to four emails where you give them insights into you, your business, your passion, your methodology. But remember, this isn't about you. You have to make it about them, how your business can help them, why your passion will serve them, how your business and your passion has helped other people just like them. Then after building up a level of rapport and relationship, you can schedule two to three emails where you remake the offer for the mini front end um, product. Um, follow this process and you will almost double your conversion rates on the funnel. Okay, so there are the four phases to a self-liquidating mini front end product which will produce free or cost neutral leads from Facebook and any other paid or organic traffic source. Now, at the start of this video, I promised you a bonus session on how you can get paid to build your email list. And if you hang around for another couple of seconds, I'm gonna get right to that. But before I do, I just wanna summarize what we've covered so far. So phase one is the traffic phase. I spoke predominantly about Facebook ads in this video, but all paid channels are a fair game here. Phase two is the enroll phase. This is where we captured your email details through our landing page. Now phase three is the elevate phase. This is where we make the offer for our mini front end product. This has to be the logical next step that somebody needs right after they get our lead magnet. From here, we split them into a purchase sequence and a non-purchase sequence, and we begin the process of converting them into lifelong clients. Okay, so now I want to show you the additional phase that can turn this into a profitable funnel. And I'm sorry, but to do this, I have to bring you through some maths. Now, let's say you can get a lead from Facebook for $2.50. So to get 100 people to your mini front-end offer page, you would spend $250. 
Now, if you can convert 10% of these people on a $27 product, you will generate $270, or effectively you will have broken end on your funnel. But here's the thing, a 10% conversion rate on a mini front end product is above average. Now, I have built funnels that convert to 25%, but that's highly unusual. You might be more realistic to estimate a 5% conversion rate, especially in the early stages when you're working on optimizing your offer. This would mean that your investment of 250 in paid traffic would now get a return of five by $27 purchases or $135. But let's say you add in an additional upsell of $197. Now, we know on the application of the Pareto principle that for every group of people who purchased a product, 20% would be willing to pay five times more. Now, this means that five people that, that five people would pay $27, but one of those people would be willing to step up to a $197 product. And that means that from your original spend of $250, you've now made $332. Now, remember the purpose of this funnel is to generate leads. People normally look on this as a sunk cost. And yes, this will take refinement and optimization, but with this process, you can begin to turn your lead generation profitable, which means you're effectively getting paid to generate leads. Leads that you will go on to make primary offers to and profit from for years to come. Okay, so now you know the phases of my mini front out product funnel, you're probably gonna to want to take a deeper dive into lead generation. So make sure you check out the videos linked on screen for lots more on how to get started with lead generation and how to design landing pages that convert. If you haven't already done so, make sure to click that subscribe button, ring the bell, and give me a thumbs up. Oh, and even more importantly, please do scroll down, leave me a comment. Tell me your plans for your next funnel. See you in the next video.